You know, I've been reading the comments a lot lately and uh, I read them every day. So number one, thank, thank you everybody for your comments. But, you know, the one thing I think is important to understand is that I recognize and it is not lost on me that we all have a different set of circumstances. And it's interesting. I, I was in a conversation with a buddy of mine. Uh, I was playing golf yesterday. Surprise, surprise. And he owns a couple of businesses and we started talking about him running his businesses and he wants to or, uh, start another business, uh, open another store so he can hire a manager to run it. And by running it, running it, he's able to collect the checks from the business without doing the work and he's living his retired life. And even now, the fact that he's able to get away and and retire, uh, or I'm sorry, and play golf in the middle of the week. You know, it's it's kind of a retired thing, and so it's 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 less about. I think when we when we think about retirement, we tend to get overwhelmed because we have this big concept in our minds of of what retirement is, and and there's the fairy tale picture of what retirement is supposed to be. And so, what I'd like to talk a little bit about today is, as opposed to getting overwhelmed, and again, the purpose of this channel is to demystify the idea of, of really living your best your best and most fulfilling life and, and fulfilling your own goals as opposed to being focused on filling the goals for the organization that you work for. There is absolutely nothing wrong with working. I'm not complaining about it. But I think if we all looked at ourselves and said, if we won the lottery today, would we do what we're doing now? And the overwhelming answer would be no. And so I like to keep it real because I think people deserve that. And that's the only way I got to where I am. So today I want to talk a little bit about some of the proven strategies that'll get you to retire earlier, maybe not as early as 51 or 52, but that'll get you to retire uh, earlier. And these are strategies that that work today. Um, and they're, they're very down to earth and, and specific strategies. But before I get into that, um, I'd like to ask you that if, if you like this channel, uh, you think it's useful in any way, please... Um, please subscribe, uh, like the channel, send me a comment. I, I respond to all the comments. I think there were one or two that, that slid by me. Um, and then I responded to them later, but I endeavor to always respond to the comments, no matter how, how small they are, because I think you're important enough and I think you're substantial enough and you deserve to hear uh, from me. Uh, and, and, and I appreciate you putting your, putting your trust in me uh, with this information. It's, it still amazes me that I woke up this morning and had 77 subscribers. And I, so I, I take that with great humility and a sense of responsibility to make sure I give you the best information, at least in the way that I did it. So on, on that note, uh, let's get into it. So I, I had one comment today and it was nice to hear. It's, it's funny because I, I never really put it in this perspective. And the guy says, you know, you're rich. I'm, I'm sorry, not you're rich, you're retired and you're part of the, you're, you know, you're part of the less than 1%. You're six foot eight, you're retired and you're less than part of the 1%. And I never really think of it that way. I mean, I, I know that I'm six foot eight and I know that I'm retired and I, I just never think that I'm part of this population of people that are less than 1%. But what amazes me the most is that there was a very, very down to earth and pragmatic way that I got to, to that point that um, I think can help each of you. And even if not getting to retirement at, at 51 or 52, it'll help you take things that may be feeling like are, are outside of your control and, and really controlling some of those things. Uh, but before I do that, I, I did want to address a, a specific question that I got. And because I, I think this, this video provides a good topic uh, or a good context for the direction we're going to go down. And, and the comment was, uh, what's the magic number uh, for retirement? Uh, did you go in with a goal in mind? I figured about 2.2 to 2.5 million is enough, but that's generally uh, what all the experts say. And you know, the, the simple answer to that is, is no, I did not go into it with a goal in mind. And, and if you would have asked me uh, five years ago, I would have told you I was probably going to retire um, 10 years from now. So it's not something that I always knew I was going to retire early. And, and the fact was, is I, I don't have two and a half million dollars. Um, so, and I'm here and I live in California. And so there's, there's other things that we need to take a look at and, and we're going to delve into 
that gets you to the place where you can start to really look at um, putting yourself in a place, as they, as they say, in the fire movement or, or moving you towards a place that gets you to, to feel uncomfortable with the fact of, of maybe doing something different than you're doing today. I don't think retirement is all about just not working uh, because, you know, believe it or not, folks, this YouTube channel is work. But the other reality is I love it. I love the fact that, um, you know, I'm able to continue with my mission, which is uplifting the human condition with anybody that's helped by any of this information that's out there. So, no, I did not have um, and I don't know that there is a specific number. I don't I, I think different circumstances are going to uh, facilitate different amounts. And, and it's really going to come down to your expenses and, and your budget. But you know, I, I kind of want to walk you through my journey because I think this will help you better understand why I say that. I, I hate putting things out there that just sit. Uh, what do they say? Uh, the hanging chads. I don't. I don't like the hanging chads. I don't just throw things out. And, and if I ever do that, please put it in the comments below because I, I just get caught into. I, I'm so passionate about this. I get caught into to what I'm saying sometimes and and may may lose a point. So if I do that, please let me know in the comments and I will. I promise you, I will, I will circle back uh, with you. But uh, just to kind of get started, you know, we've always been putting money away. My wife and I have always been putting money away into, into retirement accounts, 401ks, 403bs, and, and Roth IRAs. And that's because there was a book that I read, which um, I think was, was life-changing for me. And I mentioned in another video, but it's the nine steps to financial freedom. Um, I was broke, didn't know anything about retirement, read that book. It had nine very simple steps. And I, I took a look at each of those steps and started to, to chip those, chip away at those one at a time. I mean, I think life is about the baby steps. And so how do you, how do you take those baby steps? So I always put money away, but I had taken money out of it to buy a house, to, to pay off debt, to pay some tax bills that I had and all of those. So it wasn't as disciplined as perhaps I needed it to be. But I was, we've always been putting money into that. Um, but the one thing I've, I've tried to do is, is stay within my means. Um, and I'm going to talk about this a little bit later. But um, there was a point where I would have a bunch of expensive stuff. And, and I realized that having expensive stuff doesn't do you any good. It's, it's like E40 said, and I may say in another video at some point, he says, don't buy an $80,000 car before you buy a house. And so, but I, I tried as much as I could to live within my means. And there was a period of time where I couldn't. There was, in, in fact, one of the habits that I have is is not answering the, the phone if I don't know the number uh, because it might be a bill collector. I mean, it, it, I, I got to a place where it was that dire. Now, that's not the case anymore, but um, I was outside of my means. So I understand that pain. And, uh, but you know, it's, it's, it's funny because the way this journey really started, I think up to this point, and, and maybe fast forwarding a bunch of years is in 2021, um, you know, I took a job that after about two weeks, I knew I wasn't going to be happy at, but I knew that there were some opportunities to help uplift and, and make things better for, for some folks. And so I, I took the job and I, I, I went into the job full throated and I got, uh, after about two weeks in there, I realized that the culture there was just not a culture that was going to work for me long term. And so I realized that um, if I were to leave the job, then there's a chance that I end up finding myself in the same situation. And so, and, and we all find ourselves in those situations where it's it's easy to say, yeah, I'm going to quit the job, but then you got to start all over. Sometimes you have waiting periods for benefits, uh, sometimes in a different place, and you might have to pay for parking. You know, there's all these different dynamics. And and so sometimes, as, as an old friend of mine used to say, the juice wasn't worth the squeeze. And so I knew that uh, just changing jobs probably wasn't going to be the answer. It'd probably be, um, you know, they say same shit, different, uh, different toilet. And so it'd be the same story in, in someplace else. And so I, I, I thought to myself long and hard, and my wife and I had this conversation is, um, I had to, I have to live better. I, I've got to do something better. And you know, my wife would always say, well, you know, just quit. And then when you find another one, you can find another one. And I'm just not wired that way. Just like many of you, I'm not, I'm not wired to not work. I'm just, I'm that guy. I've been working since I was 12 years old um, and, and always had money coming in. And so it was, it was really hard. But at, at one point I, I had to make a change. I knew that continuing to jump to another job, I wasn't going to find 
the happiest. What's the song say? I, I still haven't found what I'm looking for. And I, I didn't want to be there. And what I also uh, realized is that, you know, staying in situations like that were, were bad for my mental and physical well-being. Um, there was a point in time uh, back in 2021 where I went to the doctor. The doctor told me I was probably going to end up with weight-related issues um, because of, and it was, it came down to stress. Um, I was, I was, I weighed about 276. And when you're six foot eight, it's easy to get to 300 pounds. And once you hit 300 pounds at six foot eight, you start to become susceptible to other types of other types of health risks. So my doctor told me, you know, you need to do something different. And if you, if you don't, then you're going to end up with these health risks. And I just don't want to do that. And then having had a father that had diabetes, I didn't want to end up with diabetes and, and everything that comes with that. And so I had started working on my health and, and thank goodness I was able to get down to about 250, which I think is a healthy weight, uh, a stable 250. I got down to 243, but stabilized at about 250, which is a which is a healthy weight, I believe, at about six foot eight. If you know something I don't, then please let me know in the comments below. Uh, but I, I still was dealing with the work related stress and I and I knew that wasn't going to help because some of why I gained the weight was because my cortisol levels were so high because I was so stressed and I wasn't sleeping. So at that point, I realized I just I just had to make a change. And I I didn't think I was going to be in a position to uh, to be able to retire. I was still in a in a in a in the mindset that, you know, it's going to take me at least a period of time before I'm in a position to retire. So I, I didn't think about that. But the first thing that I did was I had to change my mindset. I had to make a mental shift. And I really had to prioritize uh, my well-being. Think about how much sacrifice you have in your job as it relates to your work and how much you sacrifice your family or your friends or yourself. You know, your boss calls you and tells you that you have to work overtime and you go and you work overtime even though you had something to do. Or you just don't feel good on a certain day and you have to go into the office or you go into the facility. Uh, into the warehouse. It's all of those times you're doing that, you're sacrificing it yourself or those times where you want to go and do something, but you can't because you can't get the day off. And so at that point, I, I said, I, I've got to make a mental shift. I've, I've got to change something. Um, and I made it. I committed to myself at that moment. I was going to make that mental shift. And that change was enough for me to to make some compromises you know, I think the things that are important for us, the easy way to figure out if something is important is to determine, are you going to, are you willing to part with something that you like? And, and I had this, um, I had this car. I had, I was telling a buddy of mine the other day, I had this car. It was a really nice car. Really, really nice car. I mean, I, I love this car. I, you can see it in my face. I, I love this car. And, it was an Audi. It was an Audi S6. I, I'd saved some money for it. I'd bought it used, but it was still a nice car, V8. But every time I took it to the shop, it cost me like fifteen hundred, two thousand dollars, and and I just couldn't continue to do that if I want if I wanted to get there. And so what I did is because I wanted a better life, I said, well, I'm not going to get anywhere if I stay in this and I stay in this rabbit hole. And so I got I sold it. And took the value from that and bought myself a nice little Volkswagen. Um, and I love the Volkswagen. And I was able to buy a new Volkswagen, not spend a bunch on it. And it's a, it's a new, I don't have to pay a bunch of maintenance costs on because it, it was a new car. Uh, and that, that really was, was the first step that signified to me that things are going to be different uh, going forward. And then I, I started thinking about you. Many of you know, and I think I talked about it earlier. I love playing golf. That's what I do. I'm not very good. You won't see me on the tour. So you won't be on the tour saying, hey, there's Sabado on the first tee of the U.S. Open. Uh, but I love to play. If I ever have the opportunity to meet any of you, you know, I hope that we have an opportunity to go play golf. And um, that, I, but golf can be expensive. And I was playing nice courses that cost a lot, and I, I started to find more cost-effective ways to to play golf and and do some of the things that I like to do. Uh, because again, I knew that by spending all of this money here it was going to take away from my ability to to put money away to to change my situation again folks this is over a period of years and then um so then i i started to really get serious and 
we cut down on the um, on eating out uh, restaurants. Um, I like to drink beers. I like cocktails. So you go to a restaurant, you go to a decent restaurant, you know, you might spend, you know, a hundred dollars a person just because cocktails. When I was a kid, when I was in my twenties, a cocktail might cost you five bucks. Now they cost you 15, 25. It depends on the, on the type of stuff that you like. And so we cut down on that. And then <laughs> I advise anybody, I'm not a big fan of the whole, uh, millennial avocado toast conversation. Um, because I think there's some, I think there's some BS in, involved in that. But I do think that uh, when you look at the DoorDash and you look at the uh, Uber Eats and you look at how much that costs, uh, the last time I ordered McDonald's on um, DoorDash or Uber Eats, it cost me twenty seven dollars. So imagine doing that three or four times a week, and so you you get so it just it it just adds up, and. Uh, it all adds up. And so what I, what I did was is I, I put everything on paper because I, I had to put something down <clears throat> to create some accountability uh, for myself because it's it's easy to say, I'm going to cut, I'm going to cut, I'm going to cut, but I have to figure out what I'm going to spend. You don't know where you're going if you don't know where you're coming from necessarily. And <clears throat> so I started looking at all my, all my spending, you know, housing, food, uh, vacations and, and everything. And I went and talked to my financial advisor and said, look, I I need to figure out a way to retire. I need to figure out a way to change my circumstance. And so we put everything down, um, how much I was going to spend on um, housing or how my necessary spending, like housing, my food, my utilities, uh, things like that. Then I, I put a dollar price, a dollar value to my hobbies. Um, you know, golfing, going on vacation and those types of things. And then, then I started to offset that with looking at things that I, if I wasn't working, I wasn't going to pay for, I have to pay for like gas, uh, dry cleaning. Uh, I had to wear dress shirts and slacks every day and I had to dry clean them. Um, eating out for lunch every day when I was working, every day that I ate out for lunch, it was a minimum of $20 a day for lunch. So all of these things add up and then create a, a monthly budget. And it's, it's what was nice about it is when I, I was talking to my financial advisor, uh, one of the first things that at that time it was a she, but one of the first things they wanted to do was put together that monthly budget. And, you know, what is all this spending? What are the things that are going and coming in? What are the things that are going out? So then we can test it. I call it a stress test, but it's not really a stress test, but I was able to test that over a period of time. So again, number two is take a look at all of your expenses um, and, and understand what your financial situation is um, and, and, and speak to a financial advisor when you, when you do that. Because once you put everything down on paper, then you talk to your a professional, then they can help you ferret that out. And then things that you may not think about, you know, insurances and uh, just different costs, inflation, the impact of inflation and so on. But we put together this budget. And so and and so he says, well, this is what is going to uh, this is what is going to cost you and and on a monthly basis for your necessities and your and your um, and the stuff you want to do. So let's see how that works. So we went every couple of months going through, getting comfortable with the budget. Uh, they were probably tired of hearing from me, but we would talk and we say, look, this seems like it's going to be a little bit more and so on. Is it arduous? Yes. But what I had to do was I had to put in the work in order to get to the outcome that I was looking for because folks, I was suffering. It was rough. And so um, and then we we and we looked at how that aligned with a, a potential withdrawal strategy. So with with 401ks and pensions and things like that, this amount that it takes on a monthly basis to live, how does that compare? And we did that over a, a two year period. And, and it wasn't the first cut wasn't enough. I had to cut deeper. It's like a company. You have to lay off and you have to lay off again. Because you had to cut deeper and, and we all have to cut deeper. But the hard part about cutting deep is when we don't have an end in mind. I think Stephen Covey in his Seven Habits of Highly Effective People says begin with the end in mind. So if I know that I'm trying to make a mental shift 
to do um, something different, then I wanted to make sure that everything I did lent itself to that. And so it was always a constant idea or constant battle to how do I get myself down to the number, not in a painful way, because if you do it in a painful way, too painful, then it's like a yo-yo diet. And you know what yo-yo diets do? They go up and down, up and down. You never meet it. And sometimes you're stressed, sometimes you're happy. And you don't want to do that with your finances. Until we got, and then once we came up to that budget and we found the right mix, and again, this is going to be different for each of you because everybody has different sets of circumstances. Um, but we committed that budget. And the funny thing was, um, is our budget was less than half of what we were making. So we had this budget. We were, or what we were, uh, yeah, what we were making. So what we were making and what we were spending. And then we took that out. And then we said, okay, in the retirement, because remember, in your retirement, you're not paying the same types of taxes and so on. And you're not paying for some of those things that maybe you would have paid for before. And so our expenses were relatively low compared to what we were making because so many things uh, were changing at that point in time. And then we got to that budget and, and we committed to that budget and said, this is what we're going to do. Um, if you're not willing to commit to a budget, if you're not willing to commit to yourself, then you're frustrating yourself further because you're not doing anything to change the situation. And so what you're saying is, it's not that important to me. And that's fine. It doesn't have to be. But if you're saying that it is, then you end up making a commitment. So, so the third thing we did is we made a decision and said, this is what the budget's going to be. This is how we're going to manage it. And, and our budget is such that it has money in there for discretionary spending. We don't find ourselves struggling to buy things that we want to buy. We just realize that we're just not going to buy everything all the time. And just like it is for you today, I'm sure today, if, if anybody else out there is independently wealthy and doesn't have to worry about the money they spend, I'd like to hear from you. But even people that are independently wealthy and on that level, look at what they're spending or guess what? They're broke. They always say that the most, the cheapest people are the people with, um, with, with the most money. Um, but that's how they hold on to their money. So anyway, we made that decision and then we, we started to test the waters and said, let's, let's, let's try this out. And my wife decided to retire first. And so she retired, we made the decision. She retired soon after that. We gave it a period of time to say, how stressful is it if we just live within this budget? And it's funny how much things will coalesce around, uh, how the universe will coalesce around the right idea. I always say the universe will coalesce around the right idea every time. And then I said, you know what, forget it. I'm going to, three months later, I said, I'm going to retire too. And I did it. And folks, I was nervous. I was, I was trying to figure out ways to continue to make money. I was figuring out, trying to figure out ways to not fall uh, to the wayside. I had conversations with my financial advisor saying that I make a mistake, but I committed, I made the decision. I stuck with it. And after that, I hadn't looked back since after the initial shock of waking up and saying, I don't have an alarm clock. I don't have any phone calls coming in. I don't have any emails to check. I do check emails, by the way. So if you send me a, if you send me a, a comment or something, it, it comes to my email. So it's so I'm not being f totally truthful. I still check emails, but for personal purposes, not for work purposes. But I haven't looked back, and you know, there's some things that I had to come to terms with. I said, you know, is it is it is it risky? Sure, it's risky. There's always risk in everything, but. There's there's different risks in a situation like this is the risk is um, I don't know if you've seen my video where I talk about some of the best advice I ever had from a homeless person that told me don't ever take yourself too serious because he ended up uh, with having a nervous breakdown because he took everything super serious. If not, check that video out. It's a crazy story. And if you have questions about it, I remember it like it was yesterday and it was almost 30 years ago. Or it might have been 30 years ago. I mean, I guess I'm just getting that old. But anyway, but, you know, I the, the bigger risk was to my well-being and to my sanity and to my mental health. Because once my mental health cracks, then none of the rest of the stuff matters. The reality is if I had, if, if my mental health were to crack, I'd probably lose my job anyway. And then I'd be in a situation 
where I'm forced into a, a, a place and I, then I don't have the latitude to make it work the way that I need it to work. And so in my physical well-being, you know, again, if I started at the stress continued to, to cause me to lose weight. So was it worth it? Absolutely. Is Was there risk? Sure, there's risk. But the bigger risk is, as I tell my friends, if you lose yourself, then none of the rest matters and you're no good to anybody. And um, and then, you know, it's and when I look back, I realize that that once I put my well-being ahead of the well-being of the company, then everything around me um, improved exponentially. My relationship with my wife uh, got better. Now, my relationship with my wife was always good. So I don't, I don't want to give the misnomer that it was ever bad, but it got better. Uh, my relationship with my friends uh, are better. The new friends that I'm meeting, I'm, I'm, I'm just developing these deeper relationships with people. Um, I'm able to express myself better. I don't, I don't feel like I have to protect myself from folks. And, and, and you know, you, there's, a, there's a sense of empowerment when you live your life. And you really don't have to give a damn what people think. And as much as we like to think we don't, we have to operate in a certain way in order to be successful in a job where people are watching you and constantly evaluating you. If you don't feel that way, think about how you feel when you have your annual performance evaluation. People either like them or they don't, or they they have some emotion that's emitted. But I don't, I don't have that. Uh, mine is just, am I happy today? Am I doing okay today? And I think you see on my shorts and on the rest of the videos, that, you know, my days are what my days are, but they're not because of anybody else. So that really made, that really was um, a, a big deal for me. And I, I think, you know, I, I, again, I want to reiterate, I know there's a lot of you out there that are kind of looking at your own circumstances. I had somebody today that I was interacting with that said, look, I'm um, not, you know, I'm 53 and I'm not going to retire at the earliest until 58. You know what? That's great. Because if you hadn't started thinking about it already, then when 58 comes, you're going to be like, shit, what am I going to do now? I'm 58. Then you're at 65. Then you're at 70. Um, you, start to, you start taking a step. So the fact that you're looking at it, that makes a big, that's a big deal. Because a lot of people, a lot of times, the person that gets in the way of our progress is ourself. Because we don't believe we can do it. We don't think we can do it. And we don't give ourselves the opportunity to do it. And so... You know, the, the idea here is whether you retire, and I don't know if some of you, I think my demographic is uh, 21 to, to 65. That's that's who's watching my, my videos. Um, some are older to 65 and they're, um, that's about 25% of my, of my channel. But, you know, whether you're 21, whether you're 65, at the end of the day, I want you thinking about my my expectation of you is at least you're thinking about it. At least you're saying, I can't do this today because of this and I'm going to do something. Because, if, you know, the reality is, is you owe it to yourself to live the best life that you can. And even if it's not completely not working, are you living the life that you want to live? And are you, is there an opportunity for you to perhaps find a better way for you to feel better about what it is that you have to do on a day-to-day -day basis. So you wake up in the morning feeling good about what you have to do. Again, I'm retired and I got a YouTube channel. And this YouTube channel, it doesn't take me 40 hours a week, but I enjoy it. I enjoy the time that I get on here. I, I like trying new production ideas. I love interacting with with the followers and the, and the comments just to just to talk to them. I have other people on YouTube that I interact with a little bit that give me tips, but it's I'm always learning and I'm doing something. And I, I, I'd like to think that the world is a little bit better because of, if nothing else, there's, there's somebody else in the world that's giving them hope. So on that note, I'm going to stop here. But if, if there's any questions that you have, please uh, feel free to, to leave them in the comments. I enjoy the comments. I try to respond to the comments the same day, but you know, sometimes I slip. And so if I've slipped on you, I apologize. And if you're angry, please let me know in the comments. But or if you just have a thought about it, or if there's, you know, if there's other stuff that you'd like to talk about in the um, uh, on the channel, let me know. And, and, and I also have an Instagram channel. And I think that's going to show up at the bottom somewhere here, too. So you, know, you, can, you can like it, you can comment, you can go to the Instagram channel, you'll see a bunch of my gardening stuff on the Instagram channel, which is stuff that's that's one of my other passions. So but I look forward to chatting with you soon. Have a good rest of your day. And, and remember, put yourself first 
and prioritize your own mental and, and physical health and well-being.